Hi there, and welcome to Student Success Plan. Thanks for viewing this video today, where I am going to give you an overview of how to create an early alert in a learning management system, how that alert is then uh, integrated into Student Success Plan, and then how an advisor or other support staff within Student Success Plan could act on that early alert, issue referrals, and so forth. So I'm going to start out in the learning management system because that's really where early alerts are generated. So I've logged into a demo instance of Moodle. Uh, as a faculty member, I'm going to click on my course here. And you can see that I've got a typical course home page that you'd see something similar in just about any learning management system out there. And you can see I've got an SSP early alert link up at the top. This link is what we call an LTI link. LTI is the protocol used in uh, to integrate different learning tools. So it stands for Learning Tools Interoperability. And it's just a protocol to pass information under the hood between a learning management system or other system and a secondary system. In this case, when I click the SSP Early Alert button, which I'll do now, Moodle is passing my faculty credentials over to Student Success Plan. Student Success Plan is authentic, authenticating those credentials and then loading the early alert portlet for me. So you can see that within the iframe here, I've got SSP running, but it's within the Moodle window. So that shows the close integration between the learning management system and Student Success Plan. For early alerts. I'm actually loading SSP info in the application in an iframe within Moodle. So since SSP authenticated me as the faculty member, it understands or it knows the courses that I'm teaching in this term. So from the drop-down menu, it shows that I'm teaching two courses this term. When I select the course, the roster for the course load. So if I were to select the uh, foundational philosophy course, the roster for that course would load. So I'm gonna su uh, submit an early alert for David Robinson uh, in this demo. So I'm gonna double click David's name. And when I do that, it loads the early alert details. So we'll walk through this real quickly. Uh, this is all information that is pulled from SSP, so the course term, faculty name, which would be me, student's name, their enrollment status, some IDs, email, and student type. Here are the list of early alerts that have been opened uh, or closed. Uh, it turns out that David has four open early alerts. I can see when those were submitted, their status, there has been no follow-up, the course they were submitted for, and the term. I've got the assigned uh, advisor's name uh, because SSP is aware of who the student's advisor is. If the S uh, SIS system had office phone and department information, that would be loaded as well. And I've got a field where I could CC other people on campus, maybe a TA or somebody else who doesn't have access to SSP to let them know that I've generated an early alert for this student. Next, I've got a campus button. So I can select a campus uh, if I'm in a multi-campus institution, uh, select the appropriate campus, and then I come to referral reasons. So this is really the reason why I am opening the early alert. This is a customizable list. Uh, this is data is just here for demo purposes. So I can select maybe excessive absences, low test scores, and uh, personal concern. If I had other reasons for opening this alert that aren't listed here. I can simply select other and type a reason here. Once I hit OK, I see those loaded. I've also got a comments box down here where I can type some additional either reasons or suggestions that uh, the advisor may be able to use. So for faculty suggestions, again, another pop-up, a customizable list. This is just data for demo purposes. And I may say they need some counseling services uh, see the advisor coach, and uh, visit the tutoring learning center. Once I've uh, selected those, I click OK. 
Again, I've got the comment section down here if I wanted to add any comments that would follow this early alert around. Uh, and then I can submit the early alert when I'm ready. So when I do that, I'm gonna get a pop-up window. It's gonna ask me if I would like to send a notification of this early alert to the student. I'll go ahead and select no for demo purposes, but it's really up to the faculty member on whether or not they wanted, uh, they want the student to be aware that they generated an early alert for the uh, student or not. In addition to the possibility of a student getting the email notification, by default, a, the advisor for the student would receive an email notification, the faculty member who submitted it would receive an email notification, and any people who are watching the student, so any other uh, resources on campus who have this particular student on their watch list uh, would also receive notification via email that an early alert was opened. So once that's open, I'm brought back to the course roster. I've got a confirmation here that the early alert was uh, submitted, and I can go back in and uh, create another early alert in this course or jump to my other course and create another early alert for somebody in that course as well. Uh, for demo purposes, I'm just gonna go ahead and log out of uh, Moodle because that pretty much covers opening an early alert from the LMS side. Now I'm gonna jump over to SSP. I'm gonna log in as a coach. And I'm going to select David Robinson, who the early alert was just uh, generated for. You can see that David's got six early alerts open. Um, none of them have been responded to, which is why there is the um, peach colored highlighting there. So once I select David, I'm going to jump over to the early alert tool. The screen will change, pushing that student information out of the way. And you can see that I've got a list of open early alerts here. None of these have responses. I can see who they were created by, uh, created date, what their status is, last response date, and the details uh, for that early alert. So the course that was uh, generated. So I'm going to use um, this previous early alert, the one that was just created. I'm going to click on it, and it's going to open. And as the advisor, I'm gonna see the information that was entered by the faculty member. So I'm gonna get the reasons why, these are the checkboxes that were uh, selected for the reasons. Here's the checkboxes that were selected for the suggestions. And then if there were any comments, they would be down here on the right. Down below, I would see if there had been any responses to this early alert. I'd see those listed here who made the response, who, uh, the date that it was created, the status of the response, and any details. Over here, I've got general information about the early alert, the status. Um, once it's closed, I can see who it was closed by, when it was closed, and who was CC'd. So I can do one of two things with this early alert. Uh, chances are, as the advisor, I'm gonna go ahead and respond to this early alert. So I'm gonna click the respond to early alert button and it's gonna bring me to a window that tells me the course uh, and then what my outreach, outreach was. Again, this is a customizable list. Uh, these are just typical ways that a, a student would be contacted by an advisor. So I can say, uh, I met with the student in person. I've got an outcome drop down here. Again, uh, this is customizable. I can say, it, since I met with them personally, the student responded. And then I could type a comment in here. Um, such as uh, uh, moving to refer to tutoring center. And I've got a list of department referrals down here. I've also noticed got a closed box here, but I'm not going to close that yet because um, I'm going to refer this student to the tutoring and learning center. If in certain situations, uh, simply meeting with the student or maybe having a phone call with them to find out what the problem is that they're having or kind of talk through uh, what they're doing. There may be certain times where uh, an advisor would close an early alert after the initial contact. And in that case, you would just select this without choosing any referrals to close it. Put a comment in here. Uh, go ahead and save the response. 
it wouldn't be referred anywhere. It would just be closed with those comments um, in the record so that they could uh, you know, be referred to later. But in this case, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and refer the uh, student to the Tutoring and Learning Center, and I'm gonna click Save. So once that saves, I go back to the details page. You can see that I, uh, at this time, uh, responded, sent them to uh, there. You can see now, even on the early alerts, I've got uh, a response, a response date, and so on, our last response date. So what happened when I did that, that I'm unable to show in this demo is, that the contact in the Tutoring and Learning Center, assuming that they have uh, SSP access, would receive an email saying that David Wilson, or David Robinson, I'm sorry, would, uh, is gonna be visiting. Um, it would provide his contact information. Depending on their level of permissions, they would be able to log into SSP, view the early alert. Um, it would then be assigned to them, per se, and they could go back in, respond to it, refer it back to the advisor or refer it to another department that they felt. Uh, or uh, in some instances, they may even close the early alert um, if uh, after their meeting with the student, they felt like there was nothing more that needed to happen. So that's an overview of early alert from the learning management uh, integration piece to uh, receiving early alerts and reacting and referring them in student success plan. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please see some of our other videos on other features within the application. Thank you.